Thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session where we will put a spotlight on a new feature that enhances immersion in a very new and intuitive way. A feature that solves an age-old problem in head tracking. My name is Thomas, and I'm with Toby Gaming. I would like a show of hands. Who of you has experience using head tracking? Wow. I'm impressed. That's more than half of the people here, I think. OK, so we have been building head tracking uh, since 2001. Eye tracking and head tracking devices. They sense your intent and attention. And our latest model, the Toby Eye Tracker 5, allows for gearless head and eye tracking. It enables you to control the in-game camera by using your eye and head movements. Some games also take advantage of the unique capabilities that eye tracking offers with things like gaze-based target selection. So the Toby Eye Tracker 5 gives you an amazing feeling of immersion, right? As if you're there in the game and it's compatible with a large number of titles. It's the perfect solution for longer play sessions because you don't have to wear anything on your head. You sit down and it just works. We pride ourselves in the robustness of the signal, its accuracy, and the ability to play in any lighting condition, from a very bright and sunny room to pitch darkness. And glasses, even aviators, are no problem. The feeling of being able to look around while getting to keep your hands on your favorite control system is truly remarkable. And the eye tracker mounts under the screen. And in this case, we have a typical SIM setup, uh, truck SIM in this case, regular 16 by 9 monitor. And the problem I hinted at earlier also applies to ultrawides. It's the problem in head tracking of wanting to look around in the game beyond the range of motion of your head while still looking at the monitor. And we've been working with the community to solve this problem and to polish it across different situations. For example, we've been hearing that I would like to use head tracking to look over my shoulder down at a runway. I would like to look behind me in a dogfighting situation. Or I'd like to even look at overhead instruments. So typically, how would you achieve that using traditional head tracking? How do you get bigger camera rotation in the game? Anyone? Yep. So you can crank up the sensitivity, or you can use an acceleration curve. That's the kind of old way of doing it. This has created an entire, I would say, art of making curves and people exchanging the best settings. The problem is you have to get used to that curve, that acceleration curve. And it's not intuitive, and it's also not dynamic. It's one curve and you're stuck with it. And if you increase the sensitivity of the head tracking, it's even worse because it means that the small micro movements that we normally already make, they get exaggerated and that's not a great experience. But we crack this. Introducing camera boost. Camera boost creates an additional boost to your head tracking when you rotate your head towards where you're looking on the screen. Might be difficult to wrap your head around but the boost basically gets stronger the further away from the center of the screen you're looking and the more your head rotates in the same direction as you're looking. Actually, this is how things work in the real world. If we have, let's say, in a dogfighting situation, you, you pick up an enemy fighter in the corner of your eye. First, your eye moves there, if you would be in a real cockpit, then your head would follow really quickly. So we've looked at our normal biological behavior and we've basically applied this in our algorithms. So here's an example. In this example, you can see a user looking to the far top right. And in this case, it would cause a big increase in head tracking if he or she would move their head into that direction. And here's another example where the user looks a little bit to the bottom left. In this case, it would cause a very slight increase in head tracking sensitivity into that direction. Now, this is great for VFR flying, when you need to see out of the cockpit, but also great for other 
types of flying where you need to look at all the instruments IFR, no matter where in the cockpit those instruments are located. Now, we have just released this feature in a big space simulation game, Star Citizen, and I want to roll a quick video of a Toby ambassador called Obsidian Ant. Camera boost feature takes account into account what you're actually looking at with your eyes whilst you're making the head movements. And this overall makes head tracking feel way more natural. For example, if I look towards the left of the screen and then turn my head right, you can see the camera turns to the right. However, it never goes quite so far as to make the object I'm looking at go out of frame. In other words, the camera boost system is taking what I look at into account when moving the camera. The camera moves smoothly, and what I'm looking at somewhat restricts how far the camera will actually rotate. It's an intelligent system that just makes everything feel way more natural, and I think that probably speaks for itself. Now on the other hand, if I'm to look to the right, and also move my head to the right, the game understands that I'm actually trying to see much further to the right. Therefore, the camera rotates much faster. And not only that, if I keep my eyes looking to the right, the camera actually has a greater degree of motion. Notice how now the camera isn't restricted, but actually very quickly looks over my right shoulder. I think it's self-explanatory what the camera boost feature then will do for situational awareness in the game. And not only that, it adds immensely to the immersion. The same tracking method works regardless of whether you're in your ship, walking around, or simply sitting down and chilling out. Right, in this case you probably noticed a little bubble that's just for illustration purposes, so you can get an idea of exactly where, in this case, Obsidian Ant is, uh, is looking at. So Camera Boost is available today in DCS, in Star Citizen, and in War Thunder, and it's coming soon to Armor 3, uh, Elite Dangerous, and X-Plane. And we hope to announce more future games soon. And this weekend, you can try Camera Boost yourself, because I can talk about it, try to explain it, but you have to just experience it yourself, how intuitively this works. And you can try it out in DCS over at the booth of our friends at Thrustmaster. Thanks very much for your attention, and see you on the show floor. Toby out. <laughs>